As the world is growing more concerned with Communist China's military aggression against Taiwan, one former Chinese Navy officer, however, doesn't believe that the CCP would take the risk of attacking Taiwan because the regime knows it would fail. He believes the place where the CCP will most likely go to war with the United States is somewhere else. According to him, Deng Xiaoping established a three-step maritime strategy for the CCP to gradually develop as a military superpower to compete with the United States. And Taiwan is only one step in this plan. Hi everyone, welcome to my show. I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. I've made two videos mentioning Colonel Yao Chen. The first one is about how China stole Russian military technologies, and the second one is about the Chinese PLA's weaknesses. According to Colonel Yao, the CCP has realized the importance of maritime expansion as early as the 1980s. Paramount leader Deng Xiaoping established a three-step maritime strategy in 1992. One, to liberate Taiwan by 2005. Two, to break through the first island chain by 2010, the second island chain by 2020, and the third island chain by 2030 and reach Hawaii. The CCP's ultimate goal was to divide the Pacific Ocean between itself and the United States along the Hawaiian Islands. China would control the Pacific Ocean to the west of Hawaii, and the United States would control the territory east of Hawaii. Tamanda 成为亚洲, the CCP's original plan of Taiwan unification, according to Yao, wasn't a military takeover. The plan was to block off the island from the two ends so as to cut off its imports and exports. This would lead to economic collapse, social unrest, and political instability in the island. The CCP would then deploy its unified front workforce, aka the infiltration forces, to coerce Taiwanese to accept the CCP's One China policy. The CCP from day one wanted to avoid a military confrontation. 那时候他也没有说要打台湾他打不下来Yao explained that Xi Jinping can't make the decision to attack Taiwan alone. There is a preparation process involved, and the Chinese military professionals don't think they can win. Xi Jinping wants to attack Taiwan. His job will be to go to the air force. The air force, including the Boofan University, the Boofan University and the Air Force Institute, he has a research department. 代价多少，成功率多少，他要计算的。然后海军，海军指挥学院，他也也有这个部门，要进行认真的。但他认真以后，这个仗根本就打不赢，他不会惨的，不是说你习近平去打。Colonel Yao said that it would be very costly for the PLA to seize Taiwan by force, especially after Japan has announced it will actively be involved in the security of the region. The CCP knows that its chances of winning are getting smaller. Taiwan 
第一仗不是打台湾，首先开战的是反介入作战，他要把美国人赶出去，赶出第一岛链，他才能动台湾。所以要反介入作战。你现在美国和日本一块儿进来了，包括全世界一块儿进来，他就没办法去打台湾了。Taiwan unification is a political agenda for Xi Jinping to hold on to power indefinitely, while promoting nationalist sentiment domestically. But the CCP's real military focus right now isn't on Taiwan; it's somewhere else. 那么中共现在布局在哪里？布局在南海。南海才是中共的命脉所在，台海不是。台湾一第一岛链封起来以后，南海被瓜分了，中国没有出海口，中国就成为了一个内陆国家。所以，中共会把主要的兵力放在南海。南海舰队，中共的南海舰队的兵力是北海和东海的总和的加起来。所以，下一步如果说中共和美国发生军事冲突，在南海，不在台海。The South China Sea is crucial to China in the current geopolitics for several reasons. First of all, the South China Sea is rich in oil and natural gas, and is known as the Middle East of this sea. It's strategically important to China, which is a country that is short of energy and relies on import for its energy sources. Secondly, the South China Sea is a maritime hub in the Pacific Ocean. The Strait of Malacca is the shortest sea route between the Middle East and East Asia. It reduces the time and cost of transportation among Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. According to calculations by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, about 20% of global maritime trade and 60% of China's trade flows. Are moved through the Malacca Strait and the South China Sea, making it the most important sea line for the Chinese economy. During Deng Xiaoping's time, the CCP became aware of the strategic importance of its maritime presence, and they developed the concept of maritime homeland. And the first battle it fought in the South China Sea was in March 1988, the Battle of Chigua Reef. That time, I was in the Navy司令部。动手了。安东尼那时候的海军的舰艇啊，各方面飞机啊，还是比较弱的。我们从航空兵角度上说，我们的腿短，够不着南海那个那一块，但是也打。这种形势的逼迫，必须要走向海洋，首先要在南海取得一定的战略威慑。那么，吃瓜礁海战以后。连续拿下了七个岛，紧接着，是吧？嗯，接这个中央军委扩大会议制定了新时期的军事战略方针。After China took control of the seven islands, Deng Xiaoping came up with a new military strategy, which was the three-step strategy we mentioned in the beginning of the program. All along, the CCP realized that if it loses control of the South China Sea, it is finished. But the Taiwan unification is only a matter of saving face for Xi Jinping and the regime, and this is why Colonel Yao thinks the South China Sea is the place China is most likely to confront the United States militarily. Chinese military weapons are stored in the Hunan Hawaii. 这个火箭军的第六十三基地，山东里面，他为什么会是这么的？真的，因为南海发生战事的最大的热点能打起来的地方是东沙。东沙地上头三百公里，所以火箭军六十三基地全部前置到了汕头和潮州这一块，它大量的是短程导弹。啊，还有有一些对对对海攻击的一些中中短程导弹，他在这个导弹上面装上战术战术核武器，他就是打你的美国的航母战斗群。
Yao said that Xi Jinping isn't afraid of the United States, nor Japan, nor Taiwan, but he's afraid of his military officers because he finds it more and more difficult to control them. In 2020, the Central Military Commission gave officers a one-time pay raise of 40%. What does that mean? It means that the PLA officers have low morale and she must use money to motivate them. The colonel said it's more and more difficult for the regime to brainwash the Chinese servicemen now. Here are the two videos on the PLA I mentioned in the beginning. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you soon.